Welcome everyone to an exploration of the resource battleground where nickel takes center stage, almost like um, a high stakes chess match in the global mining arena. We're diving into how the Philippines is stepping up potentially as a nickel superpower, which has some fascinating implications for the booming EV market. Absolutely. With Indonesia historically dominating the nickel scene, their political and environmental issues have, well, opened the door for a new contender. It's pretty wild when you think about how quickly shifts happen in this sector. Right, so Indonesia has been the big player, but issues like export bans and political risk are starting to weigh them down. Meanwhile, the Philippines, although currently producing only about 350,000 metric tons compared to Indonesia's 1.6 million, holds significant untapped reserves, like an undervalued treasure exactly. chest waiting to be unlocked. True, but here's a thought. Doesn't the patchy regulatory framework in the Philippines throw a massive wrench into the works? I mean, labor unrest and weak infrastructure might just swap one set of challenges for another. Yeah, um, absolutely. The infrastructure and regulatory issues are real concerns. Yet companies such as Global Ferronickel are already investing in local processing, which is a transitional approach. It's like, um, building a bridge over a turbulent river. The gap is there, and strategic partnerships like with the U.S. Yeah. could strengthen that bridge, creating a more stable supply chain. And with EV battery demand skyrocketing, beyond just Tesla to names like BYD and VinFast, the pressure is on. But can the Philippines scale their refining capacity fast enough to keep up? That's the million-dollar question. The country isn't destined to be the top supplier, but could become a vital secondary source. Think of it like Vietnam in manufacturing, maybe not number one, but absolutely indispensable. The real mover will be policy reforms and ensuring robust ESG compliance. Speaking of ESG, environmental concerns are a huge factor. Increased mining could lead to degradation of tribal lands and marine reserves. Are we then risking another boom bust cycle by igniting this nickel surge? You've hit the nail on the head there. If aggressive ESG standards are enforced, especially by Western buyers, the Philippines might leapfrog its current state. But if reforms lag, it might just become another cycle of over-extraction followed by crises. Exactly. So in essence, we're looking at a high-risk, high-reward scenario where the strategic shift away from Indonesia's dominance could diversify the risk for the EV industry even if it comes at a higher logistical cost. Precisely. Companies are bracing themselves to shoulder those extra costs because relying solely on Indonesia is frankly strategic suicide in today's volatile market. It's like not putting all your eggs in one basket, even if the basket is huge. Right on. But I have to challenge one point. Are we perhaps overestimating the rapid transformation potential in the Philippines? Their political discipline and regulatory enforcement are still a major unknown. Fair critique. I do think we need to be cautious. Without massive policy reforms and consistent rule enforcement, this potential might remain just that, a potential that never fully matures. However, the untapped reserves offer a huge upside if everything clicks. Absolutely valid point. So five years down the line, even if the Philippines isn't the dominant player, they can still be the indispensable secondary supplier that the EV industry desperately needs. It's a fascinating pivot point that we'll have to watch closely. Exactly. That's our takeaway. High potential. But the devil is in the details. Thanks for this intense exchange, and here's to keeping our eyes sharp on how this resource war unfolds.